What is up my friends? It finished Salzburg 1, Liverpool 0 in the Reds pre-season game in Austria tonight. Look, there's lots to take from the game. I'm going to go through and give you my thoughts on it. As always, love to know your thoughts in the comment section. Please do drop a like on the video. And of course, if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, please do. If you want to catch any of our games this season, pre-season or regular season, you will be able to find us live for the watch-alongs on our Twitch channel. The link to that is in the description below. Right, let's talk about the game then. It was one of frustration. Frustration, that's the word of the day. If I was to go full on Sesame Street here and give you a word of the day, that would be how I feel. Um, we did lots of good stuff, but then again, lots of frustrating stuff. And I go through it bit by bit. So let's start off with the team that started the game today. What were the positive points from that? Well, I think we can all agree, Bjatic, and excuse my pronunciation if that's way off, absolutely outstanding. Probably the star of pre-season with regards to the young players who were coming through. That guy, he has a future in the game, no doubt about it. Mightily impressed with him. Fabio Carvalho today, I think we've seen the good points of Fabio and the bits that he still needs to work on today. And um, They weren't holding back in their challenges of him, let me say that. They were quite tasty in uh, leaving a few bits on Fabio, particularly early in the game. Curtis Jones, again, like I said about Fabio, I think we've seen the good and the bad of Curtis Jones today. He is bright. He's got great footwork. But if I'm to have one critique of Curtis Jones, actually two critiques, but one of them we didn't really see today. First one is, and I think you'll all agree with me, he loves a shot from outside the box at times. Now, today he didn't really do that, but he did take too much out of the ball on a couple of occasions for my liking. Um, Mabaya at right back, some promising signs, but just like what happened with Jaden Sancho for Manchester United's opening goal in that preseason friendly, he did give a ball away after a loose touch, which for us today, thankfully, didn't cause a goal. But it's something that I'm sure he'll have to get used to, taking that step up from underage to first-team football. It moves quicker. He'll get used to it. Gomez, though, a lot of work to do for Joe Gomez, if I'm being honest. Um, whatever happened between himself and Adrian for that header, that Adrian should have just told Joe to leave it, I don't know. Um, and how we conceded when they had two players up against four or five Frustration. Um, frustration. And look, we are at our most vulnerable in possession. I know that sounds really weird, but look back at games. Giving the ball away when we're in full flow attack just ends up with... It. And sometimes it's just a little slack sideways pass or something as simple as that. Um, but I don't want to dwell on all negatives today. Some positives. I thought that Darwin looked really good. I know that you'll get the usual idiots on social media who'll be slating Darwin and saying you didn't score and talking about an opportunity, probably the one he brought down on his chest. But I like to think about the good points today. He was a handful for the defence. He rattled a crossbar from a very tight distance with a shot. He probably had no right even getting off, let alone hitting the crossbar. And I've seen enough today to know as I did with Leipzig and as I did in the other game, we've got ourselves a fine footballer in Darwin Nunes. And when he settles in and gets used to the rhythm of how we play, as well as, of course, getting more minutes with the players he's likely to play with week in and week out, Diaz and Salah and stuff like that, he hasn't had much time on the pitch with them. So I've got no problems around Diaz, or excuse me, about Darwin. No worries about him whatsoever. And look, don't listen to the nonsense on social media from people who like to hype up or blow people down. Let's just use an example from their own logic. Darwin played his first two games for Liverpool, 59 minutes I think in total, and didn't score. And the social media clowns were saying he was he was terrible. They were writing him off and saying he's finished. Let's use their own logic in a different way. Robert Lewandowski has played, I think, twice the amount of minutes that Darwin had played in his first two games for Barcelona. Played against Real Madrid, played against Juventus, didn't score in either of them. Has played, I think, 110 minutes in total maybe 100 minutes in total, are we going to start saying that Robert Lewandowski is crap now and write him off because he didn't score in his first two Barca games? Of course we're not, because we're not idiots. So don't listen to them. They don't know what they're talking about, the people on TikTok and on Twitter that tried to slate our players. They only do it because they're worried about them. Right, let's move on to some more positives, though. Um, I thought that Keita looked okay. Some bright sparks. Really good stepping up to win the ball, actually, from Keita today. His interceptions were, were fantastic. And look, I can only put it down to one thing. It's the shaved head. It's got to be the shaved head. We need more shaved heads. It obviously gives you that aerodynamicness that you need to perform like Keita did. So yeah, I thought Naby did quite well today. Um, the subs that came on, 
I thought Andy Robertson created a lot down that left-hand side. Look, I'll be honest with you guys. I don't know how we didn't score today. It's one of those days, one of those games that we've seen played out season after season. Liverpool attack, 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 and somehow lose the game 1-0. Now, those have become a little bit more of a rarity under Jurgen Klopp than perhaps they used to be. But we do need to be a little bit more composed, I feel, at times in the final third. Today, particularly after Salah came on, I, th- I don't know how we didn't score. We were getting in our, our, each other's way. Balls just weren't dropping for us. Keeper made a few saves. But I, look, it's pre-season. You know, you want to look for the positive points. You want to look for those who are trying to get themselves into the manager's thinking. And we do have a game coming up on Saturday, Community Shield against Manchester City. And I wonder... Are we going to see Darwin start that because he only played the first half today? Um, I hope so. And also Diaz, I feel really sorry for because he was offside for the goal that was ruled out. Correct decision, no arguing. But he hasn't got himself a goal in pre-season and I felt like that would have maybe, I don't want to say he's under pressure because he's not, but I felt it might have helped his confidence. The big conversation point that I want to talk about though, apart from whatever else you guys want to discuss in the comments, feel free. I thought Salah looked really bright as well by the way. Hendo got in his way on one occasion, little one two, Salah burst into the box and Hendo obstructed him. That's the best way I can put it. But the the, the thing I want to finish up tonight on is Roberto Firmino. So I don't know if you guys have seen this, but we've been speaking about the interest or perceived interest from Juventus and Bobby Firmino over the past three or four days on the channel. It's thought that they were preparing a £19.5 million bid. But today there was a report put out, I think it was from the Empire of the Cop that we seen it from, they credited, I think, Calcio Mercado from Italy with it, that said that Roberto Firmino has instructed his agents to make the move happen. That he wants that move to Juventus. Now, my question for you guys are, how would you feel about that if it happened? Because I know Klopp always said that he's looked great in training and he's looked really sharp. I've not really seen that yet in preseason on the pitch from Bobby Firmino. Um, there are times today he had a few good bits. He had a nice little cry flick that the keeper bundled around the post. But 25 million, if we could get 25 million for him and Klopp felt like he could get a replacement, is it worth considering? Unless the club wants to give him a new deal and keep him. I just don't like the idea of losing Bobby on a free. But for him, if Juventus come in and they're genuine, they're sincere and they're and they're want to bring him over there, I can understand why it's appealing for him. I think he'd fit in quite well at Juventus. Now, Bobby's my favourite player. I never want to see Bobby leave the club. But it is a discussion point that I thought I'd put to you guys because the links aren't going away. I can't say confidently whether Bobby has or has not said to his agents to make the move happen, I don't know. I'm sure Klopp was going to be asked about it. Full disclosure, I'm recording this before I hear the manager's thoughts after the game. So if he speaks about it in his post-match interview, um, I won't have heard it yet. So I won't really get a chance to speak about it. I know your instinct is going to say, no, we can't sell Bobby. And that's kind of where mine is. But if we had time to bring someone in, and if Klopp felt it could be done, and let's not forget... Bobby will have to most likely go to Klopp and ask for a move away because Klopp has said that he expects no more business to be done unless the player comes to him and asks to leave. So again, just let me know your thoughts on that. Uh, Thiago, I thought, looked sharp when he came on. I was really happy for just, even though it was only 15 minutes, I was so happy to see Andy Robertson get a chance to wear the captain's armband today. And uh, it didn't look out of place on his arm, I have to say. Um, Other than that, I would have liked to have seen Harvey Davies get a few more minutes. Um... Especially after signing his new deal. Adrian didn't particularly do anything too wrong today. No chance with the goal, in fairness to him. So, yeah, I don't really have much much more to say. I think that's pretty much it. We got through another game. Don't think we picked up any injuries. And um, we've got two more to go before the season gets underway. Manchester City on at the weekend, 5 p.m. kickoff. We'll be starting over in the Anfield on the Twitch channel at 4 p.m. And of course, we'll be covering the, the game against Strasbourg the following day as well. I'm going to leave it there, my friends. I hope you guys have yourselves a wonderful evening. Let me know your thoughts on the game tonight and, of course, on preseason as a whole. Who stood out for you? Who maybe you're a little bit concerned about? Um, and any other thoughts you have or any topics you'd like us to cover? I do appreciate your time, as always. Drop a like on the video, hit the subscribe button, and I will chat to you, absolute legends, really soon. Much love. Bye-bye.